Hello ladies and gentlemen, Blank Check here, welcome back. First thing first, if you want to see the reactions to episode 20, Viva Las Pegasus, or episode 21, Every Little Thing She Does, those are down below in the description as per usual. Viva Las Pegasus was a fun episode, a good return of some con artists, a nice pairing of main characters, something you don't see very often, a pretty entertaining villain, some nice new visuals, and a really nice closer at the end. Every little thing she does, I still don't know how to categorize that. I was nothing if not transfixed by what happened there. Starlight mind controlling the main characters is a very interesting concept, both entertaining and disturbing. The theme of mind control works on me in weird ways when I see it in stories or television shows, and it's one reason why I look back really fondly on the season 5 premiere. This felt like a bite-sized follow-up to that in spirit, and it was super weird to see, but it was well done and I had a fun time. I'll need to give it time, but I think maybe it's one of my favorites for the season. Not like number one or two, but perhaps top ten material. It just caught me off guard. It's a place I did not really expect the writers to go. And that can often be a good thing. Anyway, this update is going to be a little different. I'm going to show art! Wait a minute, Blank. Don't you usually show art? That is true, thank you for paying attention. But this time, it's gonna be my art! Because for the past month, I've been drawing for the first time since high school, which was four and a half years ago. I even bought a sketch pad and a pencil kit about two years ago because I thought I might want to get back into it, but I never did. Until now. And even back then, I was more comfortable with interpreting other people's art or real-life objects. But here, I've mostly been doing original pieces, albeit with some indirect references. I guess I've been feeling that creative push. Plus, it's pretty good at relieving stress, so there's that. And spoilers, I have an affinity for pencil and paper, and not much experience drawing on a tablet. So most of these are sketches I scanned in. And though I've tended toward original pieces, the catalyst, the person I should blame and thank, is Duskstar. I was meandering around the internet one night, and on EQD, one of the header images I saw for a post was this. Something about the line art and the way it's shaded made me want to pick up a pencil and draw. And an hour later, I came up with this. And I should be lenient because it's my first picture in a long time. But the proportions annoy me, I made things too wide. I learned that it's easy to feel bad when you compare yourself with a great artist. So the next night, I set out to make a more original image. That said, I did originally base it on Celestia raising the sun in the Summer Sun Celebration, but it turned into Fluttershy. You know, story of my life. I drew a serene little pose, she could be gliding through the air or maybe drifting on water. I like the idea of her hair letting loose. She's so cute. Also, fun fact, I thought I finished and I even scanned it, and it wasn't until I was about to upload that I realized I completely forgot the cutie mark. And I am terrible about second-guessing myself and trying to fix little mistakes over and over again, so eventually I got angry and outlined the entire thing in pen. So every time I look at it, I wish I could go back and fix her front legs. The poor deer was born with a terrible crippling deformity. Anyway, a little while later, I went over to a friend's house, and they were watching Band of Brothers, so I pulled out my tablet and started sketching. I knew I wanted to draw two characters together, and I liked the idea of a wing wrapping around someone else. So, while the TV screen was showing the trials and tribulations of a military squad during one of humanity's darkest moments in recent memory, well, on a relative cosmic scale, I drew this, and then I colored it. You know, sometimes you just wing it, pun intended, and get inspiration during the drawing process. For example, I did not intend Fluttershy to have that face, but once I drew her body in that position, it's as if it was the only option. 
Also, as a little bonus, I played around with this a little more and have not posted it anywhere. So, for the first time, behold! I'm an adult. So, a couple days passed and I wasn't sure if I was gonna go back to drawing at this point. It was August 31st and I was actually planning to edit together a video that night. I was prepared to go back to my room and get started right after I called home. As luck would have it, that's when I found out that my cat had been put down. So I was no longer in the mood to make a video, but I was pretty inspired to make some art. And that night I spent a good little while putting this together. So far it's my only full sketch with blank check in it, and I like how it turned out. It was partially inspired by an image I saw just the day before by Paper Drop. I like the way the pony body can curve when you look at it from that top-down perspective. This was my favorite piece to that point, and it kind of convinced me to keep going. So next, I wanted to test myself a bit. Do something at the same time familiar and unfamiliar. Many of you know what's coming, so three, two, one, boom. I know, I know, how could I betray Fluttershy like that? and instead draw this normal, everyday pony. This is probably the best sketch I've done. I definitely spent the most time on it. Because publishing an Anthropic is one thing, but publishing an ugly Anthropic, that is something different. So I spent a while on the foundation of this one. I focused a lot more on shape and proportion before moving ahead. And as you can see, I took some intermediate shots because the process interested me. I've never done an anthropic before this, and I haven't touched a human body in five years. That came out wrong. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna roll with it. But I definitely used a few reference images to try to work with the curves and the joints and the proportions of the body. Images which you do not want to know. Well, most of you, at least. Anyway, when I shaded, I tried to make it a bit more dynamic, really emphasize the contrast between the lighter and darker elements. I was really surprised at how it all came together, and I'll probably do another one at some point. Maybe I'll even try to draw hands next time. Even though fingers are terrible, they terrify and confuse me. That was my last picture for a while, until just last week, it was around 2am, and I was heading myself onto Sleepy Time Junction. But instead of actually falling asleep, I decided to draw Fluttershy, of course, waking up from a good 8 or 9 hours of slumber herself. As if vicariously I could use her to satisfy my own physical needs. Uh. Once again, I will keep that line in there. Compared to Twilight, I definitely spent less time here, and I was tired. But compared to my first Fluttershy picture, I think the art here is a bit more solid, even if the image is maybe less interesting on the whole. She's still super cute though. Anyway, that's all the art I've been up to recently. At least the completed, published images. I tend to post them on DeviantArt and Twitter, the same places you can send your blank check art to have it featured in a future video. And if time allows, I would definitely like to continue drawing. I may try to familiarize myself with the tablet for some more colorful images, and if I became comfortable enough I could potentially make a speed paint, but I can't guarantee that right now. Until then, I will keep on doodling. Thank you all for watching. Until next time, remember, in the words of Andy Warhol, art is anything you can get away with.